Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Sage 50's Inventory Features Track the goods and services that your company purchases and sells to others. As you make inventory related transactions, Sage 50 posts the information to the general ledger and adjusts the quantities and costs of goods accordingly. The first step in the process is to add the items that you will need to track into Sage 50. As you add items, you can change the default information that you set up in the Inventory Item Defaults as needed. To then add inventory items, select Maintain and then Inventory Items from the menu bar. You will then view the Maintain Inventory Items screen. Notice that there are five tabs into which you will enter information within this window. General, Custom Fields, History, Possibly Bill of Materials, and Possibly Item Attributes. Now when creating inventory items, you begin by assigning the item an item ID. You then enter a short description for the item into the description field. Next, you then select an item class from the drop-down list. Every item that you create will fall into one of the classes that are defined. Item classes define the type of item that you are creating. They determine how an item's costing information is recorded. Once you save an inventory item as an item class, you cannot change the item class. The different classes of items that you can set within the Maintain Inventory Items are Stock Item, which is used as a class to track traditional inventory items. Selecting this class will track the quantity, average cost, vendors, stock reorder point, and quantity on hand of the selected item. You can also choose Master Stock Item. This is a special class of stock item that contains attribute information about several types of substock items contained within it. You can go here to maintain the substock as you cannot directly change substock items created for master stock items. You can also select the non stock item class. This is used for items that you sell but don't hold as inventory. Sage 50 doesn't track quantity on hand for these items, and there is no costing method associated. Description only is used for line item comments in an invoice. Nothing about the item is actually tracked in Sage 50. A service item is used to represent services you apply to your salary and wages account. This is useful for services provided by your employees and you can enter a cost for the service. Labor is used to represent labor that you apply to your salary and wages account. It's useful for labor provided by subcontractors and you can enter a cost for the labor. You can also select an assembly item. You use this to represent items in your inventory that can be assembled or disassembled from other stock items within your inventory. Also, in Sage 50 Complete only, you have Activity Items, which are used to indicate how time is spent when performing services for a customer. These are used in employee or vendor time tickets when you plan on billing customers for activities performed by employees or vendors such as subcontractors. You also have charge items in Sage 50 Complete and Hire only. You use this item class to identify reimbursable charges incurred when performing services for a customer. These are also used in employee or vendor time tickets when you plan on billing customers for reimbursable expenses. Now after entering those items, Next, you move to the General tab. Now, on the General tab, you enter the specific information for each item. Now, depending on the class of inventory item that you selected, some fields may not be available on the General tab. You also enter the beginning balances on this tab as well. 
First, in the description field, you select either four sales or four purchases. You can enter two descriptions per item, one which appears in the sales forms and one which appears in the purchase forms. You enter the sales price into the price level one field. For your stock and assembly items, enter the last purchase price paid for the item into the last unit cost field. Once a beginning balance or transaction is entered using this item, this field is updated by Sage 50. For your non-stock, service, and labor items, enter the cost of sales amount that should be posted when the item is sold. Next, select one of the three available costing methods from the drop-down list of choices, FIFO, LIFO, and Average. Note that this cannot be changed after the item has been saved. Also, this field will only be available for stock and assembly items. Then continue by entering the UPC or SKU code for the item. Then enter or select an item type of your choosing. This is a field that's used for filtering reports. You can enter a description of the item's physical location into the location field. Then enter how the item is sold in the stocking or units of measure field. This is optional as it's not used in calculations. You can also enter a weight for the item. Weight totals can actually be printed on reports providing you use the same unit of measurement for each item. Next, enter the income account that will be credited when the item is sold in the General Ledger Sales Account field. Enter the inventory account that will be debited when the item is bought and credited when it's sold into the General Ledger Inventory Account field. You can then enter the expense account that will be credited when a non-stock item is sold into the General Ledger Salary Wages Account field. This account will be reduced and the cost of sales account will be increased when a non-stock item is sold. You can enter the cost of goods account that will be debited when an item is sold in the general ledger cost of sales account field. Then enter an item tax type. Finally, enter the minimum stock number into the field of the same name. This is the quantity at which you will reorder stock. This field is used for stock and assembly items only. You can also enter the reorder quantity, which is the number of items usually purchased when the minimum stock level is reached. Also, specify the preferred vendor for this item by using the preferred vendor ID box. If you have a buyer of this item, you can specify the employee ID of the buyer by using the buyer ID field. When you are ready to enter beginning balances for your items, assuming that you are setting up your company, you will then click the beginning balances arrow button. We will discuss this later on, but for now on, congratulations on getting through the general tab. Next you would then click the custom fields tab. Now here you will enter any information for this item into the fields that you've decided to set up when you set the values for the inventory item defaults. You can then click to the history tab. Now you can't make changes in this window, but it does show useful information. It will display the period history date, and for that date, the number of units sold, dollar sales, number of units received, and the total cost for the item. Now if you are creating an assembly item, you can click the Bill of Materials tab. Here you enter information about your assembly class items. Now if the item that you are entering information for is not of the assembly class, then you simply skip this tab. An assembly is a group of products which you sell as a unit. To create an assembly item, you must select the required component items and enter the quantities needed of each on the Bill of Materials tab.
If you want the items that make up an assembly to print as separate line items within invoices, then click the Print Components on Invoices checkbox. Next, you would then select the item ID of the first item used in the assembly. Note that you can use any stock, non-stock, description, assembly, labor, or service item. You would then enter a short description for the item into the adjacent description field. Next, type in the quantity needed of that item in order to build the assembly. You can also use the Add and Remove buttons to the right of this tab to add or remove item components for an assembly. Make sure that you then enter all of the items that are needed for the assembly. Now you would click the Item Attributes tab only if you set up the item as a master item within the Item Class dropdown. Now on this tab, you would set the primary attribute and secondary attributes for the master stock item. And these attributes could include things like size, style, and color for instance. As you set the attributes, Sage 50 will then create sub-stock items of every possible combination between your primary and secondary attributes. Under the Primary Attributes section, you enter the name of the primary attribute that you've set. Then give the first specific instance of the set an ID code by typing it into the ID field. You would then type the description for the specific instance into the adjacent description field, and then click Add to add the ID and description into the list below. Also note that you can select an attribute within this list and click the adjacent Remove button to remove it. Under the Secondary Attributes section, you would enter the name of the secondary attribute set. Then give the first specific instance of the set an ID code by typing it into the ID field. Type the description for the specific instance into the adjacent description field and click the Add button to add the attribute to the list of secondary attributes. You can also select an attribute in this list and click the Adjacent Remove button to remove it from the list. Now note that once you save a master stock item, it will then generate every possible combination of primary and secondary attributes as separate stock items which are called substock. These will display in the created substock items list. The item ID of substock is the combination of the ID code for the master item plus the ID codes of their primary and secondary attributes. Note that you cannot delete a substock item without removing its attribute ID, but you can check the inactive checkbox for any created substock item to inactivate it. Make sure that you click the Save button when you're done entering any new information for the item in order to save it. Note that to remove inventory that you do not use, with the exception of the substock as we just mentioned, you would simply open the Maintain Inventory Items list and select the inventory item that you would like to remove. You can then click the Delete button in the toolbar at the top of the window to permanently delete it. If you have used it in transactions though, you must not delete it. In that situation, you would have to make it inactive instead. By selecting the checkbox for Inactive at the top of the window, and then clicking the Save button in the toolbar at the top of the window to save the record. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.